Anime Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an action horror anime called High School of the Dead. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The air is thick with death as a trio of high school students fight tooth and nail for their survival. A horde of the undead saunters toward them, and the three smack, stab, and bash them without hesitation. But despite the irreparable carnage, violence, and bleakness shrouding these students, things weren't always like this. Hours earlier, it was just a normal day at Fujimi Academy. Instead of studying, Kamuro Takashi spends his time cutting classes and mulling over the past. He thinks about his childhood friend, Miyamoto Rei. When they were children, she promised Takashi that she will marry him. But it all came crumbling down as the years went by. Despite being a straight-A student, Rei had to repeat a grade, so Takashi confronted her about it. She only told him that he wouldn't understand. As Takashi recalls Rei entering a relationship with her friend Hisashi, he bitterly repeats her promise of marrying him. Soon enough, his moping is interrupted by his classmate, Takagi Saya. She berates him for his constant pity partying and insistently calls him stupid in hopes that by calling him stupid, he'll somehow be less stupid. Despite her harsh words, she's just trying to get Takashi to pull himself together, but he doesn't even give her a second glance. Seeing him so lost in thought again, Saya annoyedly and dejectedly leaves while Takashi thinks back to another memory. This time, it's of Rei saying that there was a time she really felt that way, but he never seemed to notice. Suddenly, Takashi's pulled out of his reverie when he hears a man banging against the school gate. The ruckus has caught the attention of the school faculty members, who are all warning the man to stop. One of the teachers grabs the man by his collar, which leads to the teacher getting bitten. To everyone's horror, the teacher suddenly bites his colleague in a violent, mindless frenzy. Since Takashi had seen everything from a safe distance, he barges into his classroom, interrupting the lesson. He sternly demands that Rei go with him before curtly explaining what happened to their teachers. Hisashi walks up to the two, silently listening to Takashi's piece. He readily believes the boy, even though Rei is completely incredulous, and it takes Takashi slapping her to get her to listen. In the end, Hisashi and Rei follow Takashi outside, and they hurry over to gather some weapons. But just as they're planning their next move, it's announced that violence has already broken out throughout the campus. While the announcement is being made, a struggle suddenly breaks out between the announcer and an unknown person, which is heard throughout the school. This causes all of the students to panic as they rush out of their classrooms to find a safer place. Takashi and his friends decide to take a different route, avoiding all the other students. Unfortunately for them, they end up coming across a teacher who's already been bitten. The bitten teacher attacks Rei, and when she struggles to ward him off, Hisashi encourages her to fight as they can no longer be considered humans. With a steelier resolve, Rei proficiently stabs the teacher as she's a member of the Sojutsu Club. But even though she's already driven her spear through the teacher's heart, he still remains mobile. Being a black belter, Hisashi does away with the weapons and strangles the teacher, but this leads to him getting bitten. Since all her stabbing isn't working, Rei yells at Takashi to do something. This spurs him to charge forth and bash the teacher's head with a bat, finally killing him. They decide to head to the roof, where a full view of the city makes them realize that the violent outbreak is also happening in other areas, not just in their school. To their surprise, the self-defense force choppers fly over them, and Hisashi concludes that they're there for a special mission since they aren't doing anything to help anyone there. Chaos is booming all over the school with no resolution in sight, bringing out the absolute worst in people. Some are deliberately letting their best friends die in a futile attempt to save themselves. Others are going mad and killing themselves. Hisashi calls the undead them, and everything that's happening now is a disease that they've caused. They eat people, and when a bitten person dies, they get resurrected as one of them. And for some reason, the only way to get rid of them is through a blow to the head. Amidst the endless terror and confusion, the three push through, fighting the undead that come their way until they manage to hide in the roof observatory. Even with just a small bite, Hisashi's condition is deteriorating rapidly. Already, he's showing symptoms of the zombie transformation. While Rei's worrying over him, Hisashi calmly asks Takashi for a favor. He wants Takashi to toss him from the rooftop and kill him. Rei and Takashi are taken aback to hear this. But while Hisashi's coughing, vomiting, and spraying blood, he asserts that he doesn't want to be one of them. He wants to be himself until the very end. So once more, he asks Takashi to kill him. He starts writhing and convulsing in sheer pain while his friend and girlfriend are left to watch the agonizing sight. Though Takashi's beginning to move towards him, Rei stops him, still thinking that Hisashi won't turn. But he does, and Takashi has no other choice but to kill his friend before he can harm Rei. After the harrowing ordeal, Takashi and Rei are trying to make sense of what's really happening. She borrows his phone so she can call her police officer father. They learn that the entire city is in a state of panic. The call then disconnects. In another part of the school, Saya and another one of Takashi's classmates, Hirano Kuta, are running around the school in hopes of finding a safe place. 
They carefully avoid the places where zombies are. They have also come to realize that calling the police would be futile at this point, guessing that the entire city, or even the entire country, is facing the same situation. At the school clinic, the nurse Marikawa Shizuka is placed in a tough spot. The glass windows are breaking, and zombies are slowly getting inside. Luckily for her, one of the students, Busijima Saiko, steps in to help her. Saiko is a tough no-nonsense girl who's extremely adept at melee combat. Despite the threat the undead poses, she can still make relatively quick work of them. On Saya and Kota's end, they come across a room filled with tools. Being a gun enthusiast, Kuta inspects the tools and crafts a makeshift gun out of them. With this gun, the pair is able to ward off zombies that come to attack them. Saya finds out that the zombies only react to sound. Just like Takashi and Rei, the two also plan to go out of school. Hopefully, they get out of there alive and not as zombies. Back on the rooftop, Takashi and Rei decide to protect themselves from the zombies that try to go near them by using the fire hose. The strong water pressure kills the zombies and sends them flying away from the two students. Before they go back inside the school, Takashi asks Rei if she's ready, as they will have to fight so many zombies again. She tells him that she is and asks what they do after. Together, they decide to flee from the school, head to their houses, and help survivors they see along the way. With Saiko protecting her, Shizuka makes her way to the staff room since it is where the faculty keeps their car keys. Saya and Kota are placed in a tough spot, with Kota having run out of ammo and a zombie coming to attack Saya. With no weapon on hand, Saya has no choice but to scream in despair. Her loud cries are heard by Takashi's and Saiko's group. They all follow the sound of her voice and thus form a group, fighting off the zombies surrounding them and blocking their way out. Saya ends up hurting the zombie with a driller. After they have successfully eliminated all the zombies in their area, the group gets acquainted and introduces themselves to one another. The group finds a room with a television and watches the news, hoping to get some answers to the questions they have. Instead, what they find is the media trying its very best not to cause fear and panic among the people. It is also reported that the case of people turning into zombies are also happening in other countries, not only in Japan. They try to come up with explanations as to what could be causing the appearance of zombies and whether its spread would stop, but they are all at their wit's end. In the meantime, they have agreed to get out of the school and help survivors that they may encounter along the way. While trying to escape from the school, they run across another group of survivors. Takashi's group takes them in, now forming an even larger group. To test Sai's theory that the zombies can't see and only react to sound, Takashi volunteers to go and throw himself in the middle of a group of zombies. How heroic of him. Or stupid depending on how you look at it. Sai's theory is proven correct, and the group will finally be able to escape, if it weren't for this one clumsy student they have with them. The student accidentally hits his weapon at the stairs. His blunder produces a sound so loud that it alerts even the zombies far away from where they are. The group now has no choice but to fight an awful lot of zombies. Well, thank you very much, clumsy unnamed side character. Tensions are high as the group struggles for their lives, running towards the parking lot while beating up zombies in the way. Unfortunately, some of the survivors from the other groups were bitten and therefore left behind. The group finally makes it inside the bus, but Takashi sees another group of survivors from a distance. He decides to wait for them before the bus drives off. One of the survivors, Shido, is one of their teachers. He isn't a good one though, as he has no problem leaving other students behind. Rei seems to know his true nature and is against the idea of letting him join their group. In the end, Shido is able to join their group, and they're all able to safely get out of the school. During the bus ride, Shido asks Saiko if she's the group leader. Saiko replies that they do not have a leader and only rely on teamwork. Shido insists that a leader be chosen. As soon as they approach the city, traces of chaos and despair can be seen everywhere. People are nowhere to be found. Bodies are strewn everywhere, while zombies are ambling around looking for people to attack. Inside the bus, some of the students Takashi's groups have rescued are not too keen about getting out of the school. One insists that they should just have stayed in a safe spot inside the school. Another suggests that they hide at a convenience store they have just passed. The guy then points his fingers at Takashi and says that he can't stand him. Because, you know, the human race can go extinct, but not their stupidity. Rei ends up giving the guy a piece of what he deserves, and of course, Shido comes to join the scuffle, saying that this conflict started because this group doesn't have a leader. With that, majority of the students, save for Takashi's original group, support the idea of Shido becoming the leader. In turn, Rei hops off the bus, snapping that there's no way she can be anywhere near him. Takashi decides to go after her. In a strange turn of events, a larger bus containing zombies slams into the tunnel where Takashi and Rei stand. The bus flies away and blows up. Takashi and Rei, now trapped and separated from the rest of the group, must now survive a night in the city. They agree to meet with the others at the police station at 7pm. They now have to find a way to keep that agreement, all while zombies can kill them anytime. Takashi and Rei find an abandoned motorcycle and use it as they go around the city. 
In some parts of the city, the traffic is heavy, and people, those who are not yet zombies, are rushing to move to a safer place. The pair continues to drive around the city at night. It's like a ghost town, with no one but themselves on the road. The scenario would certainly be a bit romantic if not for, you know, the zombies. They find a police car with a dead officer inside. Ray decides to check the car out, hoping to find something useful for them. They discover some items, including a baton and a gun. They stop by a gasoline station to fill up the motorcycle's tank, but both of them do not have any money. Takashi decides to go to a nearby convenience store and maybe get some cash from it. As Ray waits for him outside, a man sneaks up behind her and holds her hostage. Take note that this man is not a zombie, just your regular guy who takes people as hostages. Takashi, upon seeing this, rushes to Ray and tries to save her. The man decides to take Ray and the motorcycle away, and if Takashi refuses, he will do something to her. Takashi has no choice but to oblige. Using the money he stole from the cash register, he fills up the tank of the motorcycle, just like the man has instructed, all calm and collected. When he gets the chance, he uses the gun they got from the police car to threaten and injure the insane man. The commotion among the three of them is loud enough to attract the attention of nearby zombies. The injured man is left alone to be eaten by the zombies, with Takashi and Ray driving away to safety. While driving, Takashi thinks about the situation they're in and how he, in just the span of a day, has become a killer. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.